Mm -hmm. um, so it's you start to see the technical bleeding more into the executive roles there again. I mean, if you look at the industry uh, going back a little bit here, um, like the Metas and the, you know, the Googles or even ABC, um, you know, those those large enterprises are starting to set the standards where even the executives need to be contributing at a technical level. No different than, say, a developer, right, or a or a sysops person that's that's managing data center technologies or something like that physical infrastructure or cloud infrastructure like they they want people to be hands-on now versus theoretical and in the cloud like in the in the clouds just talking about it right so it, it if you're really looking to be of the technical side of things versus more the business process it is beneficial to go out and say uh, you know look through a C, there's CISO ones now where you can be uh, like, this is, I wouldn't recommend it, but even CompTIA Plus has like their their basic certifications in cybersecurity, right? Or, mm. or from a CTO perspective, you could try to do what I did and have alphabet soup and get every certification under the sun for cloud providers or, you know, pick your technology, EMC, Dell, you know, pick your pick your poison right you could do that um to me it makes more sense for for a vcio to be aware of these technologies and how they integrate together mm -hmm. versus being a technical expert and this gets into uh, know your limits right know what you know be very good at what you know be the glue and then reach out to your your network or reach out to a, a highly technical individual that can be your your technical liaison, because um, the 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 old verbiage is is true. You can't be a master at everything, right? Mm -hmm. You could be a master at a few things, but um, you're going to hit a limitation of what you're what you're able to do. Um, whether that be time related, you know, to go back to what Sean said. You know, having a, a life work balance versus work life balance is is huge. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so knowing those limitations and making sure that you you leverage people that you know and trust, because ultimately building that trust with your client is what's going to continue your revenue streams and your continued relationships for them to bring you back when they have more problems, or talk to their friend that they went golfing with and says, "Hey, you need to work with Sean." To fix that problem that you're you're running into, right? So I'm I'm of the the mindset if you if you want to get technical, you absolutely can and go for those certifications. But just making sure you do your own continual learning and knowing what the industry is doing is a better use of time so that you can glue all the pieces together. In my opinion, got it. I'll I'll boost that really quick, Steve, too, and say. When you do look at peer groups, specifically within industries, that can give you so much value outside of the technical knowledge, because you're learning from people, you're developing those skill sets. So for example, I'm part of multiple CIO peer groups. Most yep. of them are free and you're, yep. you're just getting together once a month, kind of like this, sharing best practices talking tech enough to be dangerous where they're just like, Hey, anybody else having problems negotiating with this vendor? They just, you know, increase their rates 40%. What the <laughs> hell, where are we going? You know, let's move as a group. There's a lot of those discussions happening and it's, it's hugely valuable to not only you to showcase your value to your clients, but to the client itself, because you're moving to solutions that are tried and tested. You're not reinventing the wheel. Secondly, there are groups that are paid, but have those types of certifications, could be project management, um, could be leadership. I did a three-year leadership course specifically targeted to technical service um, and professional service provider industry companies that was great. And it really, I was the only true CIO in that cohort but I learned a lot from the other folks as well as the trainers in that mission. So you can go out, look at the industry groups, network, go to the conferences, 
understand who are the thought leaders, really get into it, schedule one-on-ones, do all of those little things around networking like Nick mentioned. And then you have a lot of people in your back pocket say, hey, remember we had coffee at this blah, blah, blah. Um, I have a gig, I think, you know, made me think of you, let's, let's potentially bring you in. And especially when you have multiple people that can fit into a solution, you're providing that much faster and being able to go to market. So think about that, especially if you want to target one, two, three industries, it makes it much easier on yourself for time. Yeah. So I, I I think what I'm hearing is, is building a community, um, participating in peer groups, both online and, and virtual, Mm -hmm. um, are ways to learn and keep up. Um, I think we had a request for or question of how to join and find the peer groups. So I think one of our homework assignments is, is to create the VCIO resource guide. And in that put a number of both peer groups and Slack channels that we can then share with the, our, our group here, uh, as a resource. Um,